Determining the right torsion springs for your garage door is probably way more important than knowing how to install them. That's because not all garage doors are created equal. Therefore, there is not one spring that fits all garage doors. That's why in this video, we're gonna be talking about a common mistake that I still see happening out in the field when determining the right torsion spring for your garage door and help you avoid it. Let's party. Hey party people, so we have a 16 by seven steel back polyurethane insulated garage door. This customer had a pair of specific springs to balance out the weight of this door, but he recently had a garage door company and I'm not gonna put them on blast, but long story short, they put a pair of springs on this door where the balance is completely off. Now I'm gonna show you to you right now. It's very hard opening. Not gonna try and hurt myself there. Okay, so the door does stay there at what is respectively the seven foot level, but as soon as you start having it go down five foot level there, right there, past the five, right there, the three foot level, oh man, it's just wanting to race down. Super poor balance. So what we need to do is replace the springs, and we're gonna be doing that with a pair of 250 wire, one and three quarter by 35s. We're just gonna make sure that it's nice and light. Okay, so here's the story. There's a customer that reaches out to me. He has a 16 by seven foam injected insulated carriage house door. And he reaches out to a garage door company to have his springs replaced. And they replace his 250 wire by one and three quarter by 36 long inch springs with a pair of 225 one and three quarter 25s. And you're probably thinking big deal, a pair of 225 should be able to balance out a foam injected or a polyurethane injected insulated garage door. And you would be right in saying so. Nevertheless, the issue with this door system is that it had really poor balance. In other words, those 225 wire springs were insufficient, not strong enough to lift or balance this particular insulated garage door. Okay, so this is it. This is the spring right here, the 250 wire by one and three quarter, 36 long inch spring. Look how big and beefy this spring is. It's not just one spring, it was two springs that was on this insulated garage door. And the common mistake that I want you to avoid is that when you are replacing springs on an insulated garage door, you do not want to put insufficient or underrated springs. So just imagine it, you got two of these lifting your heavy insulated garage door. They're supposed to be able to balance out at any level that you leave the door. But on this specific garage door, the pair of 225 wire springs were just not cutting it. So here's the point. When you have an insulated garage door, you do not want to ignore the spring that it was originally put on. If your spring happens to be a 234 wire or a 243 or a 250, then why would you underrate that is, why would you go with a 225 wire or a 218 and forbid a 207 for an insulated garage door? Granted, it will lift and it'll be kind of heavy. Nevertheless, it won't balance out that door very well. So keep it in mind, this is the common mistake that I would like for you to avoid. If you know you have a thick gauge spring, that is a 250 wire, or perhaps maybe a 262 or the 243, don't go with a lesser cycle or a smaller, thinner gauge spring. Go with the same type spring or with a spring gauge just above what you initially have. That is, if you have a 250 wire spring, then stick with a 250 wire spring. Now granted, you can go with a smaller diameter spring. That is, if you have a 250 wire spring with a two inch diameter, you can shorten that diameter to one and three quarter. And I have done that from time to time. I have taken a two inch diameter spring and I've basically shortened it to a one and three quarter inch. That's usually to make it easier to connect the spring on the center bracket. That's perfectly fine. And this goes back to my first point at the beginning of the video, is that there's not one size that fits all garage doors. That's why it's vital for you to understand when determining the right torsion spring for your garage door, 
Please don't ignore whatever's written on your door or don't ignore the actual size that you have currently lifting your current door, especially if you have good balance. Now that's where the challenge is gonna be because if your springs have been replaced a time or two and your springs keep on breaking, well, it's quite possible that the original spring size was not paid attention to, and thus they put a spring wire or a spring size that's underrated for the weight and size of your garage door. So that's definitely going to be a challenge. You're probably gonna to have to weigh the door. You're probably gonna to have to look at the door manufacturer and find out what was the original springs that went on that door originally when it was installed. So here are the two springs that they put on that door. The customer was kind enough to give them to me because he said they were trash. He wasn't going to use them. He wasn't going to need them. And as you can tell, they're brand spanking new. Now they do not have any markings or any signs to indicate what size they are, but I did measure them. So the point that we want to emphasize here is that even though these springs can lift an insulated door, they were not able to balance out this particular still back insulated door. So ask your dealer contractor what type of springs he's putting on. Is he putting on the original spring size or is he going with a different spring size? Why is he going with a lesser spring size? Does he feel that the lesser spring size are going to provide better balance and more cycle life? What about the potential of going with a higher cycle spring? These types of questions, again, in determining the right torsion springs for your door will help you avoid this mistake. Now, the same can be said about utilizing a spring size that's larger than the current smaller spring size that you have. For example, if you have a pair of 207 wire springs, well, do you really want to go with a pair of 250 wire springs? Like for example, you have a non-insulated door. Would you put a pair of those 250 by one and three quarter 36s on a door like that? No, absolutely not because it would throw off the balance completely. Thus, if you have a non-insulated door with no windows, a light 25 gauge that has a pair of 207 25s, you can go with a pair of 207s and that be perfectly fine. You can bump up to a pair of 218 by 31 inch long springs. You can even go up to a 225. But the trick there again is that whenever you start going up in spring gauges, you have to adapt for the diameter and you have to also adapt for the spring length. So the bigger the gauge, the longer type of spring you're going to need. If you know you have a specific size on your door, stick with that size if you want to, or ask your dealer contractor, what's the benefit of going with a thicker size gauge and will this provide me higher cycle life? Now the pro tips, techniques, and ideas in this video should not be considered law or infallible. Why? Well, because I'm nobody, but at the same time, it's important for you to understand your garage door needs and your garage door circumstances. Thus, if you don't care to know the size of springs that you need on your garage door, if you don't care to know how to determine those spring sizes, then reach out to a contractor because that's what we're there for. Also, if you found any value out of this video, then please hit that like button, and I do hope you consider subscribing. Now, another benefit of knowing the right torsion spring for your garage door is being able to find high cycle torsion springs. Thus, YouTube is going to suggest this video right here, but I'm actually going to encourage that you check out this video right here on some of the benefits of going with high cycle torsion springs. As always, I wanna thank you all for parting with me. Y'all stay safe.